I don't care if you're beefed up on steroids or what you're bench pressing. I'm at the best Western tossing your girl salad with French dressing. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. Answering more questions today for the Power Project brought to you by HowMuchBench.net, the Slingshot, and the only strength magazine in the world, the Power Magazine. Dot com. Make sure you subscribe. We now have over 12,000 subscribers of the Power Project and nearly 4 million views. Let's get to the first question. It's from Ill Master Simmons, which I love. I love the name if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, anyway, his question is about deadlifting. And he wants to know, uh, he's got a wider stance deadlift, a la the, the uh, deadlift stance that Stan Efferding utilized in the last meet to successfully pull 837 and to successfully be the first... Uh, guy under 275 pounds to go over 2,300 pounds raw. Um, and uh, he wants to know, are there any drawbacks of that wide stance? He's saying he can keep his back flatter and it's uh, more protective on his lower back and it doesn't hurt his lower back as much. He's able to get his uh, legs into it a little bit more, able to utilize his quads more. And <clears throat> the only drawback I can see is there's a couple things going on here with that wider stance. The bug just landed on me. There's a couple things going on here with that wider stance. Um, when you have that wider stance, um, you're going to be lifting the weight much higher than normal. So that's something to consider. Uh, the range of motion is going to be greater. You can also whap yourself in the weenus with the barbell. So be careful of that. Those of you guys out there that have snatch grip deadlift before know what I'm saying. Or those of you guys who are hung like a horse, like the people's coach, know what I'm saying as well. Even on a regular deadlift, right? But... Uh, all joking aside, uh, the main thing that's going to be an issue uh, is just getting to the, getting to the uh, you might have nice explosive power off the floor uh, with that wider stance because you might be able to leverage yourself and wedge yourself in a good position. You might be able to get some good leg drive, but oftentimes the lockout can be compromised. Also, sometimes the grip can be a little bit compromised uh, when, you're, when you have that, uh, uh, when you have that, uh, that, that far of a range of motion to go in the deadlift. So those are some things to consider. Um, the only other thing I can think of on that is uh, just that you have to have a very strong upper to mid back to be able to pull that off. If you watch Efforting uh, when he pulled that 837, he's so damn strong and so jacked and so tan that most people would get into that fishing pole position and just be completely rounded over and look like they're going to snap in two. But he's a mutant. He's Stan Efforting. He's the rhino. And he was able to stay upright enough to be able to pull that 837. So those are some things to consider. Make sure your upper back is strong as shit. Uh, Stan's a big fan of uh, rowing movements as well as uh, many other top deadlifters in the world are uh, huge fans of any sort of rowing motions. And it's because you get to keep that back locked in place. Let's get to the next question. Next question is about knee pain during squats. And this question comes from Jacques from Sweden. And uh, he sent a question into the Power Project Army at Yahoo.com. That's where you need to send your questions to. If you got one, I can't always look at the YouTubes and check all that shit out. But uh, he's got cancer going on in his knee. He's got uh, some Doritos chipping around, crunching around in his kneecap. Uh, and he can't squat uh, anything over 200 pounds, whether it's a front squat or a back squat. He said he has been trying to do some hammies, uh, some hamstring work, thinking that that's going to help. Uh, he's been trying to do some posterior chain work, thinking that's going to help. Uh, when you're hurt, you're hurt. I'll say that. So if you're actually hurt and you think that you're, um, you're actually injured, then go see a doctor. <laughs> and don't ask the people's coach. Um, but, uh, you know, like Drake says, a sprained ankle ain't nothing to play with. And a cancer in your kneecap is nothing to play with either. So make sure you take some caution and make sure you see somebody that you trust just to double check and make sure there's nothing really horrifying going on inside the kneecap. A couple things. One is you can protect your, protect your knee with wearing some sort of supportive device or wrap or strap or uh, <clears throat> knee sleeve of some sort. So those things can be effective. You don't want to always mask the pain, but you can mask the pain enough to get out the other end and get out, come out the other side of this whole thing better off and stronger. So those are some things to consider. I sell a wrap called the multi-purpose wrap off of howmuchyoubench.net, which a lot of people don't utilize for its intended purpose. Its intended purpose is to be multi-purpose, multi-faceted. You can wrap it around your forearm. You can wrap it around your wrist. You can wrap it around your face. You can wrap it around your kneecap. That's where I like to wear it. I put it around my kneecap probably 
uh, every single time I do a squat workout towards the last two, three sets, uh, I will throw it on. And it's basically all it is, it's just a wrist wrap that you're able to wrap around your knee. A normal wrist wrap, you can't wrap around your knee without it uh, staying secure. If you want a cheaper wrap, you know, cut up a knee wrap and just make it a little bit smaller so you're not uh, spending all that time and all that trouble uh, wrapping your knee forever. Wrapping your knees is also another option, though. Don't forget about that. And <clears throat> let's talk about uh, what is going on with your knee, and let's talk about squat form here for a second. A lot of people are squatting. Let's see what kind of view I can get here. A lot of people are squatting, and they're getting real forward. They're getting really forward on their kneecap. A lot, you see a lot of this action when people squat. And people just have no hamstrings, and they have no ability, no ability whatsoever to sit back into their hamstrings. A lot of people don't even have the ability to straighten their leg out all the way. I'm dead serious. It's fucking crazy, but it's true. A lot of people don't even possess the ability to bend down like they're going to touch their toes and to straighten their legs out completely. Make sure that you have that mobility. Make sure you're not missing some of those pieces because though there's some key ingredients, all that shit on the back end of your leg called your hamstring and even your calf, is it possible that that could be pulling on your kneecap and causing your pain? It definitely is. So if you want to get into a little bit of soft tissue management, uh, I would suggest working upstream and downstream, work on the calves, work around the shin, uh, and work some different areas to try to alleviate some of that pain that's in your knee because something else is probably pulling on your kneecap. The shit that's in your knee is very small, very little, very minute, and I doubt that you have an actual uh, legitimate injury in there because if you did, uh, you probably would have trouble walking and trouble with everything else that you're doing. So um, that's some shit to consider right there. Uh, working upstream and downstream, get a lacrosse ball, go on mobilitywad.com, check out some of the stuff that Kelly Sturette says on there. Uh, to mobilize the knee and to uh, dig out some of that soft tissue crap that's going on, get rid of that gnome that's in there. Um, what else we got? Oh, how about squat form? So I was just talking about how a lot of people are dumping weights onto their kneecaps, and a lot of times that has to do with shitty mobility through the hamstrings, shitty movement patterns. Stop doing that. And stop initiating your squats so much at the kneecaps, and stop um, pretending that you have no hips and that you have no lower back. It's okay to squat. It's okay to have your knee come forward. Um, it's okay to also use your lower back when you squat. It's okay to go outside the box a little bit and utilize some different form uh, for a little while to see uh, what can help alleviate some pain. So let's try a couple things. Let's try to mess around with your stance. Let's try to mess around with your foot position. If your foot is pointed out way too much, you're going to get a lot of torque on your knee. Let's see if I can show you here. This is kind of hard to, hard to do. One man crew here. One man film crew. But if your knee is torqued in like yay. Like this. That is not a good position for anything. To have your knee torqued in like that. Hopefully I was able to film that even. But if your knee is torquing in like that. You're going to want to put your, your point. Your, your uh, toes more straight ahead. More forward. Um, you also may want to play around with your stance, bring your stance in, bring your stance out, mess around with those types of things. You may want to also squat to some different heights. You may not want to squat below parallel while you have an injured knee, right? Um, and the most, the most important thing that you can do for your kneecap is, uh, and when you have a bum knee, is to do box squats. You all knew it was coming, but there it is. Do some box squats. Uh, if, you, if you've never done a box squat before, make sure you watch a lot of video. Go on supertraining.tv and check out how to do a box squat properly. Louis Simmons has a lot of uh, old DVDs uh, that he still sells on his site where he, where he himself explains exactly how to do a box squat. You're going to want to sit back on the box, not allow your knee to travel forward. If you feel like your knee is traveling forward and you're still getting knee pain, raise the box height up. I don't care if you have to squat onto a 20 inch box for a little while, but at least you're squatting and at least you're getting some work in. So maybe you go 20 inch box, maybe you go 19 inch box and over a period of time you work yourself down to a box that's slightly below parallel and you work yourself in a position where you can start to squat without a box. Um, let's see, what the hell else can you do for your knee? I think that's about it. I mean you want to stretch your, qu your quads are probably a major culprit of all this. They're probably tight. There's probably a bunch of junk in there as well that's pulling on your kneecap. 
Um, and uh, if you go on, again, if you go on Kelly Stratt's website, you've got a lot of great information there on how you can mobilize your quad and your knee. Uh, the couch stretch, look up the couch stretch because that's going to stretch your quad and your hip. All that stuff is probably pulling on your kneecap severely. Another thing, last but not least, is, uh, well, this probably is least and last. Um, the last thing uh, that can cure knee problems during a squat is a pair of squat briefs. Imagine that, some support through the hips, upstream, downstream, as we always talk about here on the Power Project. If you have some support on your hips, it can help uh, rid you of some pain in the kneecap. So that's also something to think about, something to consider. And uh, definitely hop on that box, do some box squats. Start out light, start yourself out slow. Don't try to do any explosive movements. Um, <clears throat> and get that knee uh, to be strong and stable. Also try to work on doing some lunges and some step ups as your knee starts to feel more betterist. And the last tip of the day for your kneecap is to walk with the freaking sled. Walk with the sled forward, walk with the sled backwards for a lot times, many, many, many times. A lot times a million. Just keep walking with that sled forward and backward, forward and backward, and build up all those muscles and all the tendons and ligaments around the kneecap. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv.